Welcome back. In this video we are going to be looking at the technique of substitution and this is a technique that we use when we're trying to calculate or evaluate indefinite integrals where they don't, we can't just use the these basic rules. So here are our basic rules that we have. We've got the power rule, we've got the log rule, and we've got the exponential rules, the two different forms of the exponential rules. So these are our basic rules, but a lot of our indefinite integrals are too complicated to just use these basic rules. So these basic rules allowed us to find the antiderivatives for many functions, but they're rather restrictive. For instance, we can't find the antiderivatives of any of these three functions this one here where we've got x squared minus 5 raised to the ninth power and then we have this 4x out here. Here we have the x squared minus 5 that's the power on our exponential, our e, and here we have that x squared minus 5 is down in the denominator. So for all three of these indefinite integrals we're going to need to use a different technique and the technique is called substitution. And this technique is the one that we use to undo the chain rule. So if you had to take the derivative to using the chain rule, chances are you're going to have to use substitution to do the antiderivative. Because this technique is, is used to undo the chain rule, let's practice using the chain rule a few times so we're reminded how we did this. So if we were trying to take the derivative of 3x minus 5 to the 6th power, the first thing we do is we bring this exponent of 6 down in front. We have the 3x minus 5 and then we multiply to, by the derivative of what was inside those parentheses. So this part right here is the derivative of our inside and our inside function was that 3x minus 5. So we have 6, 3x minus 5 to the fifth times 3. Here the inside function is up in our exponent. So we have the derivative of the exponential, we have e to the x squared minus x, and then the derivative of what was inside our exponent. So we have e to the x squared minus x times 2x minus 1. And then lastly, we have a natural log. So when we go to take the natural log, we have 1 over what was inside our log. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside the log. And this is what we end up with. Now, in all three of these situations, the idea of the inside function is prevalent, as is that derivative of the inside. So those are two parts that we have to really think about when we're taking the derivative of a function where we have to use a chain rule and it's so when we're using substitution we're going to have to be able to identify what's our inside function and what's our derivative of the inside function. So substitution, this the goal of this is to make a complicated integral indefinite integral look like a simple indefinite integral, one that we can just use our basic rules on. And we do this by substituting u for our inside function. So we're going to have u is our inside function. Now if we look over here at what our derivatives look like, here our inside function is what's inside those parentheses. So one option for our inside function is what's inside the parentheses. And if we look here, the second one, the inside function is what's in that exponent. So another option for our inside function is what's inside the exponent. And then here on this natural log one, our inside function ended up being in the denominator. So our inside function was the denominator. So we have three different things. It could be the stuff inside the, ex the parentheses, it could be what's inside the exponent, or it could be what's inside the denominator. So let's begin with a problem, an indefinite integral where we actually know the answer so that we can start with the idea that we know where we're headed. Let's look at one of the examples that we worked on above where we were taking the derivative of e to the x squared minus x and when we did that we got e to the x squared minus x times 2x minus 1 and this is the derivative of the, the exponent or the derivative of the inside. So just rewriting that in a different order it looks like this. So remember that the derivative and the indefinite integral they're opposite operations. So if you take the derivative 
and then do the integral, you should get what you started with. Or if you do the integral and then take the derivative, you should get what you started with. So here, our integral of 2x minus 1 e to the x squared minus x dx should give us what we started with here, what we were taking the derivative of to begin with. We always have that plus c because we don't ha usually have enough information to figure out whether there was a constant added and this takes care of if there was or, or, or if, if it was zero. Let's identify what our inside function was for this one. So our inside function what was was what was in that exponent was the x squared minus x and the derivative of that inside was the 2x minus 1. So remember that because we're going to use that in a minute. So once again, in using substitution, our goal is to take a complicated integral, so one like we had in that previous example where we had 2x minus 1 e to the x squared minus x dx. This is a complicated integral. We've got x and we've got an exponential. It's not one, one that we could just use our basic rules on. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it, we're going to turn it into a simple integral in terms of u. So we're going to turn it into a simple integral in terms of u. Then we're going to find the antiderivative and then finally we'll put our answer back in terms of x. So here's our steps. Step one, we're going to identify the u, and u is always our what our inside function was. Step two, we're going to figure out what the derivative of the inside is by finding du dx. We're just going to take the derivative of u. Once we do this, we're going to solve for dx, and this will allow us to put our integral in terms of just u. Then we're going to finish that process of putting the integral in terms of u, find the antiderivative because now it's going to be a simple antiderivative. We can just use those basic rules and then substitute back in in terms of x. So those are our basic steps. So let's go through that, those steps for this problem here. So I have my steps over here. Step one, we got to figure out what our u is. And we've already decided that u is going to be the stuff in that exponent. So u is x squared minus x. Step two is to find du dx. And we're doing this so we can figure out what the derivative of the inside was. So if we take the derivative of this, we'd have the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of x is just minus 1. So we have du dx equals 2x minus 1. And now all quarter long we've been saying that this is just a notation. Well, we're, we're going to change that up a bit and we're going to think of this in terms of an actual fraction. So we're going to think of this as du over dx. So du is a notation and dx is a notation. So if we solve, so step three, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for dx. So we're going to have du is 2x minus 1 dx. All I did was I cleared the fraction by multiplying both sides by dx and then I want to solve for dx so I need to divide both sides by this 2x minus 1. So I get dx is du over 2x minus 1. So I've done step 1, I've done step 2, I've done step 3. Now we're going to take our integral and we're going to put this in terms of u. So we're going to start out by just leaving that 2x minus 1. And here I have e to the u because this is my inside function. That's my u. And then over here, instead of putting dx, see this dx? Instead of putting that, I'm going to put this thing here. So I'm going to have du over 2x minus 1. Now look here, I've got a 2x minus 1 in the denominator and a 2x minus 1 over here, so I can cancel those out. Those cancel out. And that needs to happen in order for us to take our 
indefinite integral that's in terms of x and put it in terms of u. I have to make all of the x's go away. So when I do that, what I have here, this has canceled, so I just have e to the u, that thing has canceled, du. So I've taken my complicated integral, indefinite integral, that is in terms of x, and I've put it into one of those simple basic integrals in terms of u. Okay, so I've done step four now. This was step four. Now, step five. I have to find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u plus c. And I'm just using my basic rules there. That's step five. One thing to note is this is the most frequent step to be missed. Oftentimes people will put it in terms of u and then they'll just back substitute without finding the antiderivative. Last thing to do is to put this back in terms of x. So we're going to have e, remember we're not going to have u anymore, I'm going to put it in terms of x. So that's going to be x squared minus x and then plus c. And this is our answer. And if you remember from the previous page, this is what we expected our answer to be. Now you could check this if we weren't sure that this was the correct answer, you could check by taking the derivative of that thing. And if you did that, you'd get e to the x squared minus x times the derivative of the exponent, so that's 2x minus 1 plus 0. And this thing here should match what you had up here, and it does. Let's look at one more example. So remember, when we're trying to do an indefinite integral, the first thing we have to do is figure out what our u is going to be. And typically we have three choices for u. Either the stuff inside the parentheses that's being raised to a power, what's in the exponent, or what's in the denominator. Now if we look here, we've got two sets of parentheses, but this first or the second set of parentheses is the one that has the power. So I'm going to let u equal that x squared minus x. Now if you think back to the last problem, that's the exact same u that we used for the last problem. Step two is to figure out what du dx is, and du dx is going to be 2x minus 1. So if we look at our, what we have up here, this part is our u, and this, or our inside function, and this part is the derivative of the inside. Step three is to solve for dx, so dx is going to be du over 2x minus 1. These steps are all identical to the last problem that we did. Now in step 4 we have to take this and put it in terms of u. So our goal again is to take our complicated integral in terms of x and put it into a very simple integral in terms of u. So this 2x minus 1, there's no direct substitution for u there, then I have u to the 11th, and my dx is du over 2x minus 1. And in this next step, so we have everything in terms of u, but we want all the x's to go away. So if you notice here, I have a 2x minus 1 there and a 2x minus 1 there, so now our indefinite integral looks like this. I just have u to the 11th du. So I've taken my complicated integral in terms of x and turned it into what a very simple basic integral in terms of u. So step five is to actually find the antiderivative. So we're going to have u to the 12th over 12 plus c. Step six is to substitute back in terms of x. So I'm going to have x squared minus x to the 12th over 12 plus c. So let's check our answer. Remember to check, what I need to do is I need to take the derivative of this thing. So I have 12, I have x squared minus x to the 11th. I have the denominator of 12 down there. I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's 2x minus 1. And then the derivative of the c is 0. These 12s cancel out. And this is what I have left. And notice that that matches what I had in my original antiderivative. So come back for more examples in the 
second video on substitution.